Hello and welcome back to this coding challenge. Today I think it's coding challenge number seven. Did I get the right? Yeah, I did. So, what are we doing today? Well, as you saw in the title of this video, we're going to be creating a program of that is going to solve a Sudoku. Okay. So what's Sudoku? Well, that's the main thing we have to know. A Sudoku. Oh, Jesus! I have to resize that. Um, sorry about that. Um, okay. So a Sudoku, basically, what it is, it's um. It's basically um, a grid of 9 by 9, in this case it's from 0 to 8 to 0 to 8, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, that if we put a number here, let's say 5, 5 can be in the same row, column, or the square, okay, and we have to complete it. So we're given this, and we have to complete the entire grid. That's what we have to do. So, we're going to, because we're really lazy, we're going to create a program <laughs> that is going to, um, what it's going to do is going to solve this for us, okay? And for this, we're going to use backtracking, a uh, backtracking recursive algorithm. And if you don't know what that is, um, I recommend you to go to my other videos of tutorials of what uh, an algorithm is and backtracking and, you know, all that. So, what do we need? Well, I found this algorithm in the internet, which is quite Englishish. So, there's not much code. Well, there's no code at all. It just gives you, like, cases and scenarios and what to do if this happens or what to do if the thing happens okay so you have it here you can pause the video if you want to um but i'm gonna explain it for a second so basically we have that we're gonna check if there's a number empty cell if there is we're gonna try number one and if number one is not in the row column or square then we put it and we go to the next one and we try number one no we can't because in the square or the in the same a uh, row then we try number two then we try number three and we keep trying a uh, trying until we find a value what happens if we don't find a value from 1 to 9? Then we say, okay, no, that doesn't work. Let's go backwards. And if we say that here was 2, then we're going to try number 3. 3 can't, number 4. Okay, 4 we can't either. 5, no. 6, oh yeah, we can do 6. Okay, we put 6 and then we go. And then we go to the next one. And we keep doing that until we reach here with a valid number. Easy as that, okay? And this is going to be part one of this video. I'm going to make little videos, which is going to be better. This video is going to, we're going to create a few functions to check if they're in the same row, column, or um, square, okay? Little square, that's what I'm gonna call them. So, let's get on with the video. Um, okay, so we have three Sorokus here. One of them is just an empty Soroku, and those ones are supposed to work. Don't trust me here, because I might be wrong. And what I mean by this is that I might, uh, I don't know, I found them in the internet, okay? And this one here, Soroku 2, is basically that one here. Okay, so what do we do? Well, and I'm sorry about the lighting, but I was recording this video before and I got interrupted like three minutes in the video. So so we have a function that's going to print the Sudoku. Okay, that's just basically um, two nested loops printing a Sudoku. And in the main, we're going to say print Sudoku. We're going to try to solve it and then we're going to print it again. Okay, that's what the main is. So solve Sudoku is a function that takes an X and a Y. Okay, um, so um, what we need is the algorithm says, Ask, check if the number, if this uh, cell is empty. If it's empty, it's going to be a zero, okay? It's represented as a zero. So we check. Um, we're going to get a number. Okay, I'm going to say number is equal to one. And we say if it's empty. How do we check if it's empty? Oh, that's a good question. Well, we need to create a function. So I'm going to create a function that's going to return true or false. So it's going to be an integer. It's going to return an integer, one or zero, true or false. Um, I'm just going to say same column and it's going to take int, int and int. Why is it taking three integers? Well, we need to pass the position, okay, position x, y and then also the number we're trying to pass. So it's going to be integer, integer, integer. And we need to do the same for column, um, square and also we need to do the same for row, okay. So, um, this function, well, now we have to implement these functions. Remember, these functions have to return either 1 or 0. So, how do we do it? That's the easy bit. Um, same column. How do we do it? Well, that's an easy question. Okay, and we're back. Sorry about the cost, okay? I, um, I uh, accidentally press a uh, control F3 and, you know, stop recording. So, let's get back to it. So, we have a function that is going to return 1 or 0. It's going to return 1. If it's um, a number, um, the same number as we're passing 
uh, in the same column, okay? So how do we check that? Well, we need to check. We're gonna pass an X value, we're gonna pass a Y value, and we're gonna pass a number. Okay, so what happens when we pass, we need a for loop, don't we? And we're gonna um, int i is equal to zero. Ooh, yeah, i has to be less than ace because, um, again, if there's nine numbers and we're gonna start from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ace, okay? So i has to be less than ace, and also we're gonna increment it by one. Jesus. Um, ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so we have a for loop. How do we check if there's a similar number? Well, a column is this. So we need to check if a Sudoku x y is equal to is number. And you're thinking, oh wait a minute, x and y, that's only one position, yeah. So x represents this value and y represents, well x is this area and y is this area here. So x, in this case, if we're checking if this one here x we will be checking this one this one this one this one x is always going to be zero okay so x is a static number we're not going to be able to change it well uh, static is not the proper word but you know what i mean we're not going to be able to change it we're going to check i i is going to check one by one okay he's going to say okay so if sudoku x i is equal to number return one that means that if it finds any number it finds any number returns true this um and after the for loop and everything you know nothing happens then we say return false that's it okay and the next set of functions are going to be the it's pretty similar uh, we have one is called same row and instead of checking the x value x is going to be the i it's going to be the one that's going to be changing okay and that's because we're going to be moving it this way and the y is always going to be zero or one or two it's going to be just a number we're not going to be able to change it so, and then same square. That's a bit more difficult, isn't it? Because we have to check in between, in between this square. So my approach to this would be the following. It would be, I'm gonna, even though I kind of need it, I'm gonna keep it. So we're gonna create, we're gonna say, okay, so if, if the number is here, if the number x is equal to one, we want to set it to zero. If it's three, if it's three, we want to set it to three. No, if it's 3, we want to set it to 3, but if it's 4, we want to set it to 3. So we always want to set it to the first of the cell. So we want to say if x is equal, is greater than, no, it has to be less than 3. So if it's less than 3, so if it's either this one, this one, this one, what do we do? Well, we have to say x is equal to 0. Okay, so if it's this one or this one, it's going to set it back to here. Else if... What else do we need? Well, we need to say if x is less than six, we want to set it. We want to set x is equal to three. And if it's none of those options, then else x has to be equal to six. Okay, so six would be this position here. Okay, we have that. That's a good um, start. So we set the value. Now we need to do the exact same with the y value. So we say um, y. It's, okay, so I'm just doing the exact same with the y value because it's the exact same basically. Um, and now if now we have an x and a y value, so let's say we get this number here. We're trying to check this one. We're gonna put it back here. We're gonna set it temporarily here, and then we're gonna check. We have a four, two for loops. One for loop is gonna go from here, here, and here. We're gonna check every single one of those. Okay, that's what we're setting. If if we were to check this number, we will set it back here, and we will set this square. So. I know it's a bit confusing, but that's just the way it is. So i has to be, i starts as x, okay? And i has to be less x plus three, okay? Because we're gonna have to go three times. So if x is here, it's gonna be one, uh, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. But, um, so to do a 2D array, to check for a 2D array, we need two for loops, okay? As I said before. So we want and j is equal to y, y has to be less than, j has to be less than y plus 3 and then j plus plus and funny thing is that we're actually finished because now we, we're checking this number okay it's gonna go it's gonna check here here and here if the number's here it's gonna check two, 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 okay so that's quite easy okay so we have three functions that's gonna return true if both things are working okay so 
Um, actually, I want to stop this video right now, and this is going to be part one of a uh, how to solve a Sudoku. I know this is not the most uh, important part of the video, but you know we have to do it as well. Um, so in the next video, we're gonna look more about what to do now, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, thumbs up. And if you didn't, no, 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 no thumbs up. No, no, no. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon next video.